My name's Brandon and this is Cartoon Network Video Game History, a show where I take a look back on all of the video games based on Cartoon Network shows and retrospectively review them. The new blood is flowing through Cartoon Network Video Game History at the moment, with Regular Show making its debut this week. Out of this particular era of shows, Regular Show is the one I gravitated towards the most. Its style of humour meshed perfectly with my own, and of course, the constant references to video games were right up my alley. While Regular Show aired for 8 seasons, it received just one video game. Mordecai and Rigby in 8-Bit Land is its one chance to shine. This one and only Regular Show game was developed by Way Forward, who developed the last Cartoon Network game, Hey Ice King. Mordecai and Rigby was released on October 29, 2013, basically one year after Way Forward's Adventure Time game. This essentially means Way Forward started on Regular Show immediately after shipping their last game. You may have noticed that the frequency of Cartoon Network releases is slowing down. The channel has gone from sometimes releasing multiple games in the same week or even on the same day to a few games per year, to one game per year. Video games are certainly falling out of favour with them. Unlike Hey Ice King, Mordecai and Rigby in 8-Bit Land was exclusive to the 3DS, not offering any support for the ageing regular DS. This makes it the first Cartoon Network game to be exclusive to the platform. While I loved WayForward's efforts with Hey Ice King, and critics agreed with me, this game performed far worse. It has a dismal 48 on Metacritic, which puts it in the conversation for one of the lower rated Cartoon Network games in history. It received a 7 from Destructoid and a 6.2 from IGN. Not awful scores, but it also received 4s from Nintendo Life and EGM, as well as a 3 from GamesRadar. While it seems not everybody hated this game, there are some alarm bells ringing. After Hey Ice King, I have trust and faith in WayForward, so surely they couldn't have made one of the worst games in Cartoon Network video game history, right? So, WayForward made one of the worst games in Cartoon Network video game history here. It pains me to say it, but Mordecai and Rigby in 8-Bit Land is a massive disappointment. Being a big regular show fan and knowing this is the show's one chance to shine in its own video game, I was hoping for the best. Unfortunately, we've got a massive stinker on our hands here. WayForward is clearly fascinated with old school games, because they've done exactly what they did with Hey Ice King. Hey Ice King was one big homage to The Legend of Zelda 2, while this game is a homage to a number of games from yesteryear. You see, Mordecai and Rigby in 8-Bit Land utilises three completely different styles of gameplay here. It starts off as a side-scrolling platformer that is kind of a hybrid between 2D Mario games and Mega Man. It then introduces shoot-em-up gameplay, before finishing off with top-down shooting. Paying homage to one style of game like they did with Hey Ice King is tough, but trying to do it with three different styles is a monumental task. Unfortunately, this gamble backfired massively for WayForward. I'll start with the platforming sections. Things are pretty simple when you drop into the first level. All you can do at first is run and jump, as well as switch between playing as Mordecai or Rigby. Mordecai and Rigby have slight differences in how they play. Mordecai is able to double jump, while Rigby can get into those hard to reach places. The differences are very minimal, and I found myself playing as Mordecai 99% of the time, because the double jump is so much more valuable than Rigby's unique ability. Just like a Mario game, jumping on the heads of enemies will defeat them, but somehow WayForward has completely bungled this. The hitboxes for enemies are completely broken. You need to be pixel perfect when jumping on enemies to actually damage them. There's nothing like jumping on top of a snail, expecting to kill it, only for the game to tell you that in fact, you're the one who is dead. I honestly cannot remember a platform where I've played where jumping on the head of an enemy has been this finicky. It got so bad that I just said screw it, and mostly just double jumped away from enemies. In general, the platforming just isn't anywhere near as tight as it needs to be. It certainly isn't on the level of Mario or Mega Man. And that's a running theme throughout this game. Hey Ice King succeeds because it improves upon the negative elements of Zelda 2. This game fails massively because it worsens many of the great elements of the legendary games it wants to pay homage to. Eventually you'll run into a power-up that allows Mordecai and Rigby to shoot during platforming sections. This is where the Mega Man vibes start to come in. As you progress to later levels, the design definitely feels more inspired by Mega Man, but a big problem is that you don't always have the ability to shoot. For some ungodly reason, WayForward decided to not allow power-ups to carry over from level to level. This results in some seriously absurd challenges at times. It's like playing through a Mega Man game without the Mega Buster. You'll play through the first world of this game only doing platforming, but as soon as you jump into the second world, you get a big surprise. Suddenly, the game is now a shoot-em-up? However, levels can also still be played in side-scrolling form. The game not only includes three separate gameplay styles, but it blends them all together in a single level. The game tells you that you have the ability to turn into a ship, but it doesn't give you much more information other than that. This resulted in me starting the first level of the second world and just getting my ass handed to me before realising I needed to become a ship. 
Now, maybe that was all on me for being stupid, but it feels like the game should have had clearer instructions or maybe just not attempted this hybrid of styles. So once you've figured out this second gameplay style, you start flying through incredibly cramped levels, shooting at bland enemies, occasionally switching back to platforming. While platforming levels can be tricky without the power-up, completing them is still very much possible. Beating the shoot 'em up sections without a power-up is damn near impossible. This means that if you don't have one, you basically have to go through a level at the speed of crawl, inching your way past enemy encounters, and it's just not even remotely fun. Once you plow through the second world, you're introduced to the final gameplay style, the top-down shooter. I think the top-down shooter parts are the least frustrating, but that's because of how laughably basic it is. Here's what you need to do. Hold down the button to shoot and kill every enemy while they're out of your cone of vision. It's so dull and feels like a pointless addition to the game. Eventually, once you reach the fourth world, they combine all three styles into one, forcing you to switch on the fly. Instead of feeling clever, this just feels clunky. Switching styles rarely feels natural and mostly just illuminated how badly WayForward should have picked a single style and rolled with it. A regular show game that purely tried to be a Mega Man clone could have been really good, but when you saddle it with a million other things, it's a bad experience. When you get to the end of each world, you're presented with a boss battle. These made me want to pull my hair out 99% of the time. This is where the one-hit kill aspect and power-ups not carrying over really frustrates. Performing a lengthy boss battle without the ability to even withstand one single bit of damage just sucks. I can't put it any other way. The very worst of this is the final boss. Once you've trudged through all of this garbage, you're greeted by a boss who has not two, not three, not four, not five, but six stages. Six different stages in a boss battle, and you have to do it without taking a single hit. Not even the most notoriously hard video games ask you to do this. To make matters worse, much of this boss battle asks you to jump on the boss's head, which brings all of those issues on board too. There were so many bullshit moments where I died because I jumped on the boss's head, but apparently jumped on the wrong part of it, and this resulted in me dying. I was basically slamming my head against the wall with this boss battle, getting through a few stages and then failing over and over again. Then, randomly, the game decided to checkpoint me on the fourth stage of the boss battle. I had made it up to this stage before, but apparently this time they wanted me to be able to start from there. It was truly bizarre. With that checkpoint and what felt like a million more tries, I was eventually able to conquer this game. If they didn't give me a checkpoint out of nowhere after 40 minutes of slogging, I would not have beaten this game. In the end, it took me roughly one hour to beat this boss. To put that in context, that equates for about one third of my playing time for the game. I hope I'm properly expressing just how bad this boss battle is. It is absolutely ridiculous, especially for a kid's game. If somebody under the age of 12 managed to beat this game, I would be truly impressed. Even ignoring the final boss, this game seems absolutely terrible for kids. Yeah, shows like Adventure Time, Regular Show, and Steven Universe have developed large adult followings, but at their heart, they're aimed at kids. Making a Regular Show game this difficult is just insane to me. If I played this when I was 10, I would have put it down after 30 minutes and never played it again. I'm just baffled as to how WayForward have gotten things so wrong here after making such a great game previously. It's like they have completely misread the situation here. To go alongside the one-hit kills, you also have one, or maybe two if you're lucky, checkpoints in levels. This is not nearly enough when you're out here dying in one hit. There's nothing like trudging through a difficult section, dying from a single hit, and having to redo it over again. Levels also have a countdown clock running in them, which I assumed would make you die if it hit zero. Nope. Multiple times I had the clock hit zero and the game just kept going? Nothing in this game makes any damn sense. So yeah, the gameplay absolutely sucks, but maybe there are some redeeming factors here. I mentioned at the start that I love the humour of regular show, and I was really hoping WayForward would nail that in the same way as Hey Ice King. Unfortunately, I expected too much. While Hey Ice King was full of comedy and story elements, regular show is absolutely devoid of it. Here's the entire extent of the story. You get an opening slideshow that shows Mordecai and Rigby getting a new video game system, once you beat the final boss, you get another slideshow with Benson yelling at the guys. It all ends with Mordecai and Rigby asking if they should play the game again. God no. And that's it. That's the extent of the humour and story in this game. When the credits roll, they attribute the game's story to JG Quintel, regular show's creator. God, I would have loved to have seen his writing process for this. In my mind, I imagined WayForward asking him for the story, and Quintel, having put it off until the last minute, just busts out, uh, Mordecai and Rigby play video game? That's literally the extent of the story. The two very brief cutscenes we get are basically devoid of any jokes. It is depressingly bad. Literally none of the humour and charm you get in an episode of Regular Show is present here. 
You could honestly replace Mordecai and Rigby with two generic characters, not change anything about the rest of the game, and it wouldn't seem out of place. However, I will give the game credit for two things. First off, graphically, the game is pretty respectable. It doesn't knock your socks off, but the pixel art is nice, and while environments are very repetitive, they do look solid. More importantly, the soundtrack for Mordecai and Rigby in 8-Bit Land is really good. It's nowhere near the insane level of the Hey Ice King soundtrack, but WayForward have proven they are masters when it comes to music. I absolutely despised this game from start to finish, but I do have to give it credit where credit is due. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go crazy. Check this Mordecai and Rigby in 8-Bit Land is so damn frustrating. Basically every design choice WayForward has made here just has me shaking my head in disbelief. I guess it's kind of admirable that they tried to pull off this fusion of gameplay styles, but it just doesn't work. Instead of focusing on one thing and making it respectable at the very least, WayForward put together three very subpar styles. Why did they make it so you die in one hit? Why don't power-ups carry over from level to level? How did we go from the brilliance of Hey Ice King to this? At the very least, I was expecting some typical regular show humor to be sprinkled throughout, but that's non-existent. They don't even try to implement it through the gameplay. I don't know if I've ever seen such a stark drop-off from a developer one game to the next. Perhaps the tight turnaround from Adventure Time to regular show impacted it? A year isn't a whole lot of time to develop a game, and a big part of me feels like many of the design decisions could have been nixed or ironed out if it was given more time to incubate. The worst part is that this is it for regular show in the video game space. Regular Show does get representation in the crossover title Battle Crashes, but that was it. It didn't even get a chance to show up in LEGO Dimensions like Adventure Time. As a big fan of Regular Show, this sucks. Hopefully the next episode is a much more positive experience. The next game on our schedule is Ben 10 Omniverse 2, which was originally the last ever Ben 10 game before the reboot came along and got its own video game adaptation. I'm crossing my fingers that game will serve as a much better swan song to the Ben 10 franchise than Regular Show's one and only video game. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out.